Okay, I hope you guys print out the um, find the, uh, the PowerPoint. Because I've been going going through very faster than normal. So previously, uh, the different units we've been discussing like all the basic things that everyone one time like uh, been exposed to uh, in terms of like uh, uh, what's it about like electricity, atoms, and so forth. So what we discuss in the next uh, two units is mainly uh, pertain to X-ray imaging systems and how the X-ray works. So all these will be probably brand new. <coughs> uh, if you're taking 146. Uh, some of it will be reviewed as well, especially next week when we we'll talk mainly about the X-ray tube. Uh, it's pretty much 146 crossover. Sweet. How do you get that here? All right, X-ray imaging system. Now make sure you have the hand up before you guys do. Now the purpose of, uh, in terms of a medical purpose, uh, x-ray are used for two main reasons. One for diagnostic uh, procedure and the other therapeutic. And I've been um, discussing about this um, in the first, two, first second unit. Uh, diagnostic x-ray is pretty much the use of x-ray to determine the cause of disease or the injuries or the disorder. Usually with diagnostic x-ray, it's in the killer voltage. Um, so this is what the doctor uses to see what's going on, to make a diagnosis. In the therapeutic use for x-ray, they usually use x-ray to treat um, the disease, or to get rid of the disease, or this, this disorder. Um, it can be both in KB and in the megavolts. Um, with example of therapeutic would be such as uh, radiation therapy um, that's used to cure the disease of the cancer. Sometimes we could use both as diagnostic and therapeutic, such as a brain enema. It can be used as either therapeutic or diagnostic procedure. Um, brain enema, if you guys have heard of that procedure, it's just a procedure using um, barium to see what's wrong with the intestines, the large and small. And you have to go through the other end. Not the fun, it's not easy. So that's the two main use for x rays in terms of medical purpose. When you walk into the x ray room, there's two main things you will notice the most. One is the x ray table itself, and then the x ray tube. The x ray tube usually is uh, attached to some sort of um, uh, either a ceiling or to the floor with some sort of um, apparatus helping to move around. The x-ray table, the tabletop, is used to design um, and made of carbon fiber. Uh, the purpose of the table is to support the patient during the exam. Comfort is not the main thing. And we use carbon fiber as the main sort of the tabletop because it's strong and sturdy and it's really lucent. So it's allowed x-ray to go through uh, the tabletop without uh, interference and cause an artifact. The tabletop can be designed as a free-floating uh, tabletop, motorized, or a stationary tabletop. Um, with free-floating, they use some sort of uh, push pe uh, foot pedal that we press it, which release the tabletop <coughs> so to move that tabletop in any directions to align it with the x-ray tube uh, uh, to the anatomy of interest, so you don't have to move the patient. And a lot of the x-ray tables design is free floating. Uh, other design would be motorized, in which there's just a, bu a button up, down, left, right, and then you just press up or down, and then the tabletop move based on how long you press the button. And then stationary tabletop, which means the tabletop doesn't move. In order to align the anatomy of interest with the extra two, you have to move the patient. So that's um, the most uh, not efficient, but it's just cheaper because you don't have to put more um, mechanism into it. 
uh, some X-ray table can are uh, fixed or tilting. Fixed meaning it just lay flat. All right, um, that's meaning for diagnostic X-ray. Tilting at tabletop that means the uh, X-ray table can be tilted up to pretty much up by to ninety degree uh, for uh, some sort of uh, procedures. Usually, tilting X-ray <coughs> table are designed for um, with a fluoroscopy um, to st for study purpose. And then all extra tables have a bucket tray. A bucket tray is pretty much uh, is a place where you insert the extra cassette to hold the cassette. And then the extra tube itself, usually all extra tube have an attachment, a collimation box. Um, so this is an example of collimation box. And on top of that, needs to be the extra tube. The purpose of the collimation box is, as an implied, to help collimate the uh, size of the X-ray beam. And there's usually a light field which represents the X-rays, since we can't see X-ray. Right? So we use light as a representation of where the X-ray is coming out and interacting with the patient. Some collimation box, actually a lot of collimation, have what's called positive beam delivery device. This is an automation collimation in which there's uh, when you press put a uh, cassette of any size uh, into the bucket tray there's a sensor where you close it into the um, because uh, uh, press it into the underneath the uh, table the table it automatically collimate to the size of the cassette so you don't have to adjust it it just uh, and when you move the tube up and down it, the collimation light will just automatically adjust the size it's just for uh, efficiency for to save time However, you could deactivate the, the PEL um, if you don't think you need that much field size to help reduce scatter radiation and patient getting it. Mm, such as when you do a hand x-ray, you use a 10 by 12, which is kind of big set, you could deactivate the, uh, the collimation, or the automatic collimation, just to make the field size smaller for the hand. You don't need to make that big for all the extra scatter radiation coming out. And then of course the light field. So these are the knobs that control the collimations. And of course, the entire room is that line. Door, windows, pass boxes, if this is one. Just um, to protect any sky radiation escaping from the room. Any questions? Just not quite clear what, what a positive beam limiting device is. It's, I have it it's, automatically yeah, collimates to yeah, so you say I have a 14 by 17 cassette. Uh -huh. And when I put it into the bucket tray and close it in, the collimation light will automatically just open to this to that 40, to 14 by 17. Okay. Exactly 14 by 17. So it's just an automation, so you don't have to adjust it yourself. It just automatically. So that's what the PBL does for you, right? Yeah. Okay. Or oh, you said you could turn it off and adjust you it, it and adjust it so yourself. You adjust yourself. Gotcha. <clears throat> Any other questions? <clears throat> so here's an example of uh, just uh, actually a table which is actually could go up and down. Uh, this is for two patients. Some patients, especially the elderly, have a difficult going to the extra bed so you could just lower down and then to the height and then as they get in just adjust the height. And for me too, it sounds similar short. <laughs> <laughs> Here's a uh, one of the x-ray room. This is a G brand. So here we have your coffee foot pedals, you press on it and then you move the your hand, you move the check top. And the button trace right here, it uh, just stays still. <coughs> and then align the extra two to the bucket tray without moving the location just to the tip top to the anatomy of the knees. <coughs> That's another one. Um, so here's the bucket tray. So this room has two, usually all of them have uh, two bucket trays, one on the table and one for the wall bucket. Um, this is mainly used for upright position, such as a chest, chest x-ray. Uh, when you're in a, in a room, 
when you're working the table upright, you have to make sure to select uh, on the, the control menu. Is it wall bucket or table bucket? Otherwise, uh, there are some distortions on the X-ray. Because within the bucket, there's an oscillation that help a grid is taking 1.6. The grid oscillates really fast to help the X-ray go through. Yes. Um, for a table buggy tray, is it able to slide? They can slide it to, to oh, wherever okay. you want to. Uh, so um, here's a room that's tilting. So it's a room that usually have fluoroscopy. X-ray is usually built underneath uh, the actual table. So it's tilt up for usually fluoroscopy uh, examination. Up to 90 degree in one way. Yes. Um, With the uh, tilting wheel, they usually a uh, a couple of accessories that comes with it. They have the footboard that you could either attach or detach. Uh, if it's just laying flat, it's usually detached when you're ready for procedure. You attach it with hand grip and just have to pick and then you lift up slowly. And then this extra tube, which is floss grip tube, can go up and down, depending on what the radiologist wants to do with it. This is called an on F room. It has both uh, traditional radiography and fluoroscopy x-ray. The traditional radiography uses x-ray too. And when you not, when you use an x-ray, this fluoroscopy to just move out the way to allow the two to take traditional x-ray. If you want to use fluoroscopy, then this you move to bow, move this thing, use fluoroscopy, and there's a, usually a TV monitor in the room so that they don't <coughs> just have to see what's going on as you do the fluoroscopy. Of a, a buggy, place a set in, center it, align it, and then if, if, if there's a PDL, there's a sensor that we want to make a So if there's a buggy, it's just like a draw to keep the setting without needing to move, um, move it. And the way how you line the bucky to the tube is usually a light telling you how to align the tube. Sometimes you do it, and then the bucky and the tube is not aligned, and then you actually get it, and then you just cut off. It's like, I'm sorry, you moved. <laughs> <laughs> Always blame the patient. <laughs> there's usually two sides. There's a positive terminal and a negative terminal. The positive side of the x-ray tube is called the anode. And the anode is usually made of uh, a disc um, portion. <coughs> this is where the x-ray comes out. I'll, I'll create it. So the anode is the positive charge side of the x-ray tube. And the other end, which is not the <coughs> Apart, uh, it's called is a cathode. The cathode is the negative charge side of the tube. That's where it get the electron, where the source of electrons are. Filament will be just coil of wires that boil off electrons when heated. Similar to the incandescent, uh, incandescent light bulb, there's a filament, but with the X-ray, it's more strong and sturdy and it get really hot. As it get really hot, it starts to glow. Uh, this glowing um, causes the electrons from the film to escape. So the, which the escaping part is called the film rod emission, the boiling up of the electrons um, when the filament gets heated up. Well, the, the main part of the anode is the is a disc. Okay. Uh, it's the tungsten disc. Okay. That's where the uh, where the X-ray radiation come out. We can talk about the anode um, when we talk about the X-ray tube next week. And the disc is just 
just one of the main part. But that's the main <coughs> point. Any questions? Okay, the actual imaging system. Jellies are divided into three units, or three separate areas. <clears throat> now the function of the entire extra energy system is to provide a control flow of electrons that is intense enough to generate X-ray energy. Today we're going to discuss merely the operating console and the high bulb generator. The X-ray tip will be discussed next week. And within the high bulb generator, it could be uh, this, uh, a different area in which we discussed, such as the high bulb transformer, HVT, the filament transformers, and what are the rectifiers. Is the one that uh, will be, that you be familiar with the most of because that's the one that you interact every day as you expose the patients. And that's how you, that's where you control your technique selection and timing exposure. The high volt generator is something you just that's an know, internal component, right? Yeah, you just know it's there. It's, it's a generator, and then the extra tube is like, well, that's when you move the wrap. Now the hypo generator, we have the high voltage transformer. Which is pretty much a step up transformer. And then we have a filament transformer, which is just a step down transformer. And then we have rectifiers um, devices inside the X-ray imaging system. And the purpose of the rectifier is to convert AC electricity into DC electricity. Uh, the pr production of X-ray is more efficient with DC electricity. Since the power that the uh, X-ray unit get from come from uh, the hospital, the hospital gets its power from the power plant. And the power plant generate AC electricity. So um, the purpose of rectifier is just to convert the AC electricity into DC electricity. And of course, all these components are also merged into oil for insulation, um, mainly part of it to help dissipate heat. The production of X-ray generates a lot of heat, and the oil helps dissipate those heat more fast and more efficient. Uh, type of transformers in the X-ray circuits. There's three main type of transformers. We have the auto transformer itself. Um, this is the first um, tra transformer in which the electricity goes through. As it interact as the electricity goes through the auto transformer, it then delivers uh, the electrical uh, units to a high volt transformer and filament transformer. What about this? And our 
transformer is also remember what was it? Is it self induction? Self induction. I work transformer HVT is a step down. Uh, step, step up. up. Step, step down. Step down. So high voltage increases voltage. So the transformer increases current. And that's how we control our technique KV and modems. Step down, this step down transformer, so current increases. Uh, the control console. The control console can come in, in any variety of way. It can be digital uh, control console. Touch screen or icon, uh, or just like buttons, three buttons to push. <coughs> the control counselor is where the technologist set the technical factor, such as KV, MA, and time duration. <coughs> only a legalized technologist can make an explosion or press a button. Um, if you're not legalized, you can do it. When as a student, when you work in the hospital as an intern, uh, you are working under the license, under the technologist license. So that's why you always work with a, a technologist. Uh, that's why they get a upset when you make a mistake, because it's their license on the line, since you don't have one. <laughs> so the control side is an off that you turn on and off the X ray unit in the room. <laughs> At night, uh, if there's three rooms in the hospital, they usually turn off two, uh, two of the three. It's not busy, so I'll use one room just to see if that's um, It also have a device called the line compensation or line compensator. Throughout the day, the electricity that the hospital receives, uh, that the extra unit needs, needs about 220 volts. But the 220 volt fluctuate as it comes in. It's not consistent. The purpose of the line composite is to ensure that the <coughs> electrical energy that's coming into the X-ray imaging system is 220 volts all the time uh, to produce consistent X-ray productions. Um, so it, it monitors um, the incoming electricity uh, to make sure it's compensate. If it's too much, if it's lower, if it's too little, it increases to exactly 220 volts to produce consistent X-ray energy. Uh, back in the good old days, I don't know, 1960s, 70s, uh, technologists have to monitor this line comes it so they see some sort of scale and reach a certain scale, they can make, make an exposure. Nowadays, it's all automation, so it's still part of the control console, but we don't even look at it at all. It's pretty much hidden. But before then, the technologists have to monitor that line comes it. Um, this is where we make our MA selection, really amperes. So this is we control the amount of electrons, which in turn control the amounts of uh, X-rays. So it's a <coughs> quantity, since it's an amount, the milliampere. And then we have our automatic timer. Uh, that's also determined durations, <coughs> which then relate to the MA2, because durations is amount as well. How long the duration is. It's automation, so it would stop automatically based on uh, how much milliampere has reached the cassette, and then at that point it just automatic turn off. You can deactivate deactivate the automatic timer and just do uh, the, the time selection. So if you want, to, if you need more time, you increase the time selection. Especially you know, if you do such as uh, I don't know a side view of uh, side view of the L spine. No, side view. Can't remember what you do with the Anyway, uh, so you uh, increase the time to blur out certain stuff so you can see the other part of the anatomy. And then this is where you make your exposure, the switch. Um, there's two parts to switch there's a prep and then the exposure. 
The prep is like when you press the button halfway down, it rotates the end of the tungsten disc, and then you, and when, when you make one make an exposure, you press all the way down. Another uh, console, if there's two buttons, uh, there's a prep and the exposer. We have that in the 309. And uh, there is it's just a button, I mean, a, a push button, then you press it halfway down and then all the way down. It's not instantaneously when you make exposure. If you want to make instantaneous exposure, such as uh, when you're working with a child that moves a lot, you can have another extra tech or a mother or father in there, hold the baby, you prep the exposure so, it's, so that the load is already ground up and it's ready to expose. As soon as you write up, you press it up and then you make exposure. Um, so that's what we have to do. Uh, KVP selection station, that's controlled the strength of the x-ray. So it's the quality, of, the quality of, it, of the x-ray. High KV increases the speed of electrons going from the cathode to the anode, um, <coughs> um, so inc which increases the penetration power. So quality, KVD, penetration power, quality of the x-ray. And then there's a button for which type of bucket you're using, either it's table or wall bucket. Make sure you choose the correct, correct one. Are chest x-rays always standing? You don't do them on the table? Um, we'd like to have them standing. Uh, if they can't stand, then we do a lot of portable x-ray too. So the patient, so we have this patient to sit up. Um, yeah, I don't want to see What about the distance? the distance? The distance is a tube. You just adjust the tube. Yeah, because the tube is uh, connected where you want to have for a hot closer basin. So the tube have a, have a, remember this? So here's the tube connect to this beam. So when you want to do a chest x-ray, which is usually 72 inches long, you have to adjust the tube, and there's a rail that's connect uh, to this, so you adjust the distance. And the tube is going to be you have the manual, it's not part of the control console. So here's an example of an old um, control console. Now actually, room, the, the, the whole unit can last 50 years as well. So most hospitals want to keep them and try not to replace them because it costs a lot of money to replace them. And this is still in work, and it was made in 1950 or so. And this is where I used to work. <laughs> so uh, here, it's huge compared to nowadays. Not, nowadays, the control console could be big as the TV monitor. This is why I use in county jail. Like, do, 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 do. <laughs> and then compared to this, like, after I use, uh, no so uh, here we have the KV selection stations. It's in the increment of tens, um, so we call it the major KVP selection. So if you want to do a uh, procedure that needs 75, so you plus uh, 70 stations, and you need five, then we have a minor KV selection in the increments of one, which is 75. Um, and then to search your mass, MAS, you have to figure out how many seconds and MA to get your mass. And so there's a key heat, trying to find MA to one eighth of a second, second will give you 3.12 mass. In this type of Time selections, it is in fractions. Time selection can be any, any uh, display either fractions, milliseconds, or decimal. Here it's in fractions, so this is a little sheet. At the jail, do you guys use, is it computer radiography or is it? Or is it it's, it's digital. It's digital? So I have this, like, just like, oh, what is this all about? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just confused. <laughs> Look how big it is. And then the, um, the exposed switch is attached to the other, you have to pull it down. <laughs> so I try to use this room. I try to avoid this room as much as possible. Um, when I was working in the hospital, like, have patients, uh, and, like, the handle of my head, like, Mess around with it, just push button, button, like hopefully it works. <laughs> and when we make an exposure, I was like, fire it full time to be Because he actually, because it's full time, so. Anyway, so that's it.